Nearly a decade ago, the business of space changed. Exactly in 2014, NASA tapped SpaceX and Boeing to build two new human-rated spacecraft, the Crew Dragon and Starliner, respectively. This was intended to end dependence on the Russian Soyuz. Each company would first prove its ship capable of safe flight, then perform as many as six crewed missions to the International Space Station. From that moment onward, Soyuz, Boeing, Starliner, and Crew Dragon capsules have been put on the scale together. The result? The SpaceX Crew Dragon completely destroyed the others. Ask me why? Let's explain. We can't deny that so far the International Space Station is still one of the greatest engineering feats humans have designed due to its support for almost every space mission that leaves Earth. It is one of a kind for it is one of the few times humanity has come together to build and use an item or station without any fracas. Since it was launched, hundreds of laboratory researches have led to understanding space and how humans may survive on other planets it's been done. After all, it's a football field sized floating laboratory traveling 10 times faster than a bullet, circling the Earth every 90 minutes. It's taken 33 launches to put all of its pieces into orbit, and it's been home in space to astronauts from almost 20 countries. The ISS typically has six astronauts on board. Crews are sent in groups of three, and they usually reside at the station for six months. This is typically a three-month overlap for the existing crew and newly arriving crew. Since the space shuttle program ended in 2011, there's only been a single ride to the ISS, Russia's Soyuz vehicle. Since NASA ended that space shuttle program in 2011, the agency relied exclusively on Russia to ferry the astronauts to and from orbit at Soyuz spacecraft. But those seats have gotten increasingly expensive, and the world's space agencies have had no alternative for launching and returning astronauts even when technical glitches have arisen. That's what spurred NASA to launch the Commercial Crew Program, which was designed to facilitate the development of new American-made spacecraft. The program put private firms in competition for billions of dollars worth of government contracts. SpaceX and Boeing came out on top, but the SpaceX Dragon passed the Boeing Starliner by at least three years. Dragon's ability has even humiliated Soyuz. Talking about size and capacity aspects, the Soyuz is very, very small. The habitable space in the descent module is only four cubic meters, and honestly, that has pluses and minuses. From an engineering perspective, smaller is better, cheaper to launch. But from crew comfort viewpoints, the Soyuz is very cramped. I might even say cramped squared. Once you're strapped in, your heels are nearly in contact with your butt. You're tied down at eight points to a form-fitting couch, making it difficult to move anything other than your arms and swivel your head and wiggle your toes. It may seem more like a medieval torture chamber than a rocket cockpit, but the tight enclosure is essential to protect your body from flailing around due to the hard landings on the steps of Kazakhstan. The danger comes from more than just flailing appendages. Internal organs can move around with undesirable results. High G-shock can cause the heart to break loose from its mount, rupturing the attached plumbing, and the liver can slide down where the kidneys used to be. Being tightly strapped into a form-fitting wash tub helps keep your internal organs in place. Because rockets can go bad without warning, the crew has to be ready for an abort and subsequent hard landing even during launch. So astronauts assume this position whenever there's dynamic flight. The Starliner capsule is silver, somewhat squat, broad-based cone shape, coming in at 11 cubic meters. Now, the completely autonomous Starliner is required to carry four NASA crew members and scientific researchers when it eventually travels to the ISS. Meanwhile, a Dragon is more elongated, a candy-white cone-shaped capsule that's about 8.1 meters tall with a diameter just greater than 4 meters with 11 cubic meters of internal volume. It makes parachute-aided splashdowns in the ocean when its work is done in orbit. Importantly, Dragon can be business class of spaceships. It's safe and it's comfortable, fully autonomous, but it can be monitored and controlled by both onboard astronauts and the SpaceX Mission Control in Hawthorne, California. It has two main elements, the capsule, which carries crew and cargo, and the trunk and three windows. Its astronaut-specific amenities include four big windows, advanced avionics, computer systems, and touchscreen displays, including controls for interior temperature, which can be set from 18 to 27 degrees Celsius, and of course, seats. Crew Dragon is outfitted with an emergency escape system, which consists of eight Super Draco engines built into the capsule walls. If something goes wrong at any point during a Crew Dragon flight, 
those engines can fire up and carry the spacecraft and its passengers to safety. Starliner's emergency escape system consists of four launch abort engines built into the capsule service module. Boeing performed a hot fire test of those and was provided by an aerospace company Aerojet Rocketdyne, but detected a propellant leak shortly after. Next, even Dragon's technology also gives big humiliation with Starliner and Soyuz. Frankly, Boeing is making technology that looked the same many decades ago. The Crew Dragon 2 has a better heat shield that could enable it to be used for faster re-entry back to Earth, thus enabling it to function beyond LEO that the ISS is in. Importantly, even if Boeing succeeds fully, which we hope they do, they'll only be able to produce two launches a year. It's one-use throwaway rocket system built from legacy parts of the Space Shuttle. SpaceX redesigned their rockets and Crew Dragon capsule from the ground up by reverse engineering old engines, systems, etc., and radically improving each area with 21st century interfaces, materials, and know-how. And the Soyuz is, as I'm sure you're aware, a design that is, on the outside at least, in excess of 55 years old. It looks pretty much like it did in 1967. And lastly, we're going to talk about the price per seat. And this one has a pretty big asterisk. Roscosmos was charging on their latest seat $90.3 million, and that's not cheap. The SpaceX commercial crew flight represents a savings of $100 million over Boeing. And don't be startled by this, since the Starliner hasn't flown yet, it's necessary to consider both ticket prices and inflation will add up. SpaceX per ticket cost appears to offer significant savings relative to the price of flying astronauts on the Boeing Starliner. That's assuming, of course, Starliner is eventually certified safe to even carry astronauts. The latest per-seat ticket price offered by SpaceX, $75 million. According to a 2019 report by NASA's Office of Inspector General, Boeing flights were expected to cost about $90 million per ticket, which was already more than Roscosmos was charging. Adjusted for inflation, Boeing's price works out to about $100 million per ticket in today's dollars, also more than the implied price of a Roscosmos ticket. So compared to what Boeing would charge, SpaceX astronaut tickets represent a taxpayer savings closer to $100 million per spaceflight. That's a huge number from the tax American people have to pay every month. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.